My name is Peter Jan, and I am an addict. I'm addicted to communities. The theme of communities is a red thread through my life. Nine years ago, I have established my own community in the form of a family. I'm the proud father of four beautiful children. And 15 years ago, I've joined a company that can be considered as a community. We are an international community of about 60 people. And at Christmas, we don't get a big box with presents, but we give each other books and we write postcards for each other. We don't have management and we like that. We consider ourselves as one big experiment in being a community-based grid organization. And we do not only that because it keeps us off the streets, but we believe that this is the best way to give meaning to the reason why we are on Earth. And why are we on Earth? We are the learning company. Our goal is to create an environment for ourselves in which we are exceedingly challenged to learn. And that's exactly our profession. We make learning environments for clients, for organizations, multinationals, governments, NGOs. A community is a place of belonging. It's my personal conviction that in our times, we need those places of belonging. Through my iPhone, I am in contact with almost everyone in the world. And at the same time, I feel lonely. People of my generation, they have more free time than any moment in history. And at the same time, the burnout rates are higher than ever. We need places of belonging. We need communities. I want to call upon you to become a community builder to look at your own organization as a community and to create a place of belonging for yourself and for others. To learn about how you can grow communities and how you can build them, I want to share the three lessons that I have, le uh, that I have learned in being an entrepreneur of a community-based grid organization. But before I do so, I want to tell you about how I came into contact with the founder of our company. And for that story, we'll go back to the year of 1999. In the year that the Venga boys traveled to Ibiza, <laughs> I traveled to Enschede. I traveled to Enschede because I started studying educational science at the University of Twente. And after a few months, I got used to the life of a, of a university student, and also the city of Enschede began to feel a bit like home. And then I started with Joseph, talking with Joseph Kessels. I started talking with Joseph Kessels. He was a new professor at our university. And there were rumors about him. There were some stories about strange things happening in the classroom while he was teaching. His classes, they looked more like debates, conversations, dialogues, instead of a one-way lecture. He didn't like formal exams. He'd rather ask us students to review the work of our fellow students. And he regularly invited people from outside the ivory tower of the university into the classroom. I met Joseph at the restaurant of our faculty, which looked and sounded like a swimming pool. I've always remembered this meeting because the reason that we came to talk with each other was that I made a mistake as the editor-in-chief of our monthly journal of the faculty. I totally screwed up an interview with him. I felt deeply ashamed. We continued our conversation in his room at the third floor. And that was the only room at the university without a fixed computer. Joseph used to work with a laptop because he regularly worked outside the university. And it was the only room at the university with a round table. So there was no chance for anyone 
to sit at the head of the table, to create any kind of hierarchy. In our conversations afterwards, Joseph taught me a, a very new, a completely new perspective on learning and education. He said, knowledge is a personal thing. You cannot store knowledge into systems. You cannot even write it on paper. Knowledge is a personal skill, a personal competence. Let me give you an example. I am a guitar player. When I, for instance, hear Bruce Springsteen play the guitar, it doesn't mean that I can do that right away. I can listen, I can study, I can practice, uh, or I can even be mentored by Bruce himself, which would be very nice. <laughs> but it would only help me to develop my own style in playing the guitar. Knowledge is a personal thing. Bruce has got his talents, I've got mine, and you got your talents. Joseph brought me into contact with his company, Kessels and Smith. I joined the community and I became an entrepreneur of a company that was built on the idea of shared ownership. And Peter Block attributes the idea, the concept of ownership to communities. He says a community offers the promise of belonging. And belonging that is not only about feeling at home somewhere. It's also about ownership. Something belongs to me. And that's the first lesson that I've learned in 15 years of entrepreneurship in the community-based grid organization. I've not only learned about the principle of ownership in this community, but also in other communities. For instance, the community of the big church in Gorkum, just around the corner. I used to be youth pastor in the big church in Gorkum. I was very dedicated to, to grow the community and to make the church as attractive as possible for our youngsters. And it was a hard job. Teenagers, they chose to turn their backs on the church. They said, listen, it's a beautiful church where my parents come. It feels like they own the church. It just doesn't feel like the church is mine. You feel at home at the places that are yours. The philosopher, John Locke, he writes about ownership. And he says that if you add labor to something, if you contribute to something, then it becomes yours, then it becomes yours. So if you pick an apple from a tree, then you add labor to it, and then it's yours. So if you want to build, if you want to start a community, then the first question you have to ask yourself is, how can I commit myself to become an owner of this community? A community is a relational thing. And in a relationship, your first task is to make yourself known. That says Eugene Peterson. The people whom you are relating with, they have to know who you are and what you can mean to them. It's the only way to build a sustainable relationship or a vital community. If you want to make yourself known, then you have to know who you are. And in the context of work, you can ask yourself the question, what do I like to do? What are my talents? When am I being challenged? And that's the second lesson about communities that I've learned in my community-based grid organization. It's about entrepreneurship. It's about finding your talents and expressing them in a group of people. And that's what I call entrepreneurship. And I wrote a book on this topic. It's called Entrepreneurship as a Way of Life. And since I'm addicted to communities, I thought, this is a chance to create one. So I did. I published a video on Facebook, and I announced that I wanted to write a book on the topic of entrepreneurship. I involved possible readers in my writing process to make it more fun, and also to learn about their entrepreneurial questions and challenges. 
I got a Facebook group of 50 people. And every now and then I published a part of my writing on the Facebook group. And those were thrilling moments. Moments that I made myself known to the community. That was exciting, that felt vulnerable. I remember doing so for the first time. It was at the island of Tessel. I, it was in October and I had a, a holiday with my family. I made a deal that I would pay the holiday if I was able to write on my book during the morning hours. And then in the afternoon and the evening we could do very nice family things. I think it was Tuesday, around 10.30. I thought, this is the moment. This is the moment to publish for the first time some of my work on the Facebook community. And it felt vulnerable. I thought, I'm going to share some of my dearest work. How would people respond? I remember touching the mouse button, closing my MacBook, and we went out for a swim and had dinner at the beach bar. But I couldn't wait to go back and to read my Facebook messages. And when I did so, I was very surprised. Already five people had, re had read my work. And reading the feedback was very two-folded. At the one end, it felt very appreciative to, to, to see that all those people, they took the time to, to read my stuff. And at the other hand, I saw that much work was needed to finish my book. Yeah, working in the community can take some time. I've completely rewritten my book for three times. In a community, you always relate to others. You are interdependent. And the question is, how do you shape that interdependence? The third lesson of being an entrepreneur in a community-based grid organization is that you can shape your interdependence by discussing the mutual attractiveness. By discussing whether you are still attractive to each other. About 10 years ago, I sat together with my colleagues Paul Kirsten and Robert van Noort. We were talking about my personal development. It was at Paul's house. We sat at a, squa at a square table. I was sitting at the head of the table. Robert was sitting left to me and Paul was on my right. And I was telling about all the crazy stuff that I was doing. I was working with so many colleagues. I was working on so many projects. I was working on research, on design, on consultancy. I was working night and day. And then Robert said, you're all over the place. And Paul said, can't seem to bring it all together. Where is Peter Jan in this story? For a moment, it felt like they had punched me in the face. I was knocked down for a few seconds. How could they say this to me? I gave everything. But then I thought, you're right. I'm pleasing all my colleagues. I'm doing all this stuff. But what is it that I want myself? What's my own expertise? I thought that I would be attractive for my colleagues by pleasing them. But instead of doing so, I became invisible. I became unattractive. I'd lost my focus. This was a very important moment for me. I saw that something from my side was needed to become more attractive to my own community. Traveling back home in the Interliner 387, <laughs> I thought I'm going to focus on a new topic, on the topic of learning biographies. I had a call with my colleague Hans Grotendorst and we decided, we committed on writing on a special issue magazine on this topic. And it worked out very well. I got enthusiastic on working on a topic that I had initiated myself. And after a few months, I got invited in new projects for the national government, the Dutch railways and Shell. So, I am addicted to communities. And this is what I have learned in 15 years of entrepreneurship in a community-based grid organization. It's my personal conviction that our society is longing for communities. And I've called upon you to become a community builder, 
to look at your own organization as a community and to create a place of belonging for yourself and for others. If you want to do so, then choose a place that's close to your heart. And first, commit yourself to become an owner of the community. That's ownership. Then, express your talents and make yourself known. That's entrepreneurship. And third, sharpen your interdependence by discussing the mutual attractiveness. That's interdependence. But be aware. Building communities can be a silent killer. You start feeling at home at your community. You express your talents. And you start building good relationships. But one morning, you wake up. And you'll find that you have become a community addict. Welcome to my community. Thank you. <laughs>